Thank you, Senator Rubio, and Senator Warner, and Senator Moran. I really have enjoyed working with Senator Rubio on the AGREE Act, and it really came out of a simple proposition. Uh, we were stuck here late one night uh, as our body was sort of grinding along as the Senate was in session way beyond the time when each of us had hoped to go home to our respective young children in Delaware and Florida. And we got into a conversation where we challenged each other to look seriously at the elements of each party's, each chamber's jobs plans and see if we couldn't find some elements in common that we could agree on, that we could package into a bill, and that we could move forward. And that AGREE Act, which we introduced now many months ago, has actually had two of its provisions now enacted, one by Executive Order, one in the Jobs Act. And so, along with Senators Warner and Moran, we took a look at the Startup Act and decided to find areas where there were common provisions that all four of us could support. There's two I'll point to briefly, because the whole provision includes things on taxes and trade, immigration, innovation, intellectual property, um, that I think grow out of the very strong and very good work uh, that Steve, jo Steve Case and the Jobs Council uh, and the folks at the Kauffman Foundation have been doing. Um, there are some tax provisions in this bill that I think uh, deserve some attention and merit. One, making permanent um, the capital gains exemption for qualified small businesses, and the second, an innovation or a startup business tax credit that takes the existing research and development credit and sharpens it and focuses it, focuses it so it's accessible to startup companies. There's a lot of provisions in this bill that deserve serious consideration. As we've already seen with the JOBS Act, it is possible, even in this sharply divided Washington, even in an election year, to pass things that we can all agree are in the best interest of our country and our economy. As our recovery continues, now in its 26th month of continuous private sector jobs growth, I think all of us agree we'd like to see that jobs growth be more robust. And we all agree that supporting America's entrepreneurs helping them with access to markets, to capital, protecting their inventions and innovations, giving them access to world-class talent are things we can and should be doing. Last, in some ways, the most important thing we can do is to simply stand together, to show to the average American out there who is wondering, who is puzzled by the partisanship and the division that they see here in Washington, whether we can come together to do things that are in their interest, the four of us stand here to say, yes, we can and to challenge our respective caucuses to take up these ideas, to move them forward, and to enact them into law. That is the only way we will not just sustain this recovery, but strengthen it in a world where we have vigorous global competitors. As Senator Warner said at the outset, Brazil and China, India and Russia, they're not taking this year off. We can't either. We need to work together. With that, I'm pleased to introduce Steve Case, a talented entrepreneur, a member of the President's Jobs Council, someone who has been a real leading voice for entrepreneurship and innovation. We are grateful for what he's added to this debate so far. Steve. Thank you, Senator Kuhn, and thank you all four senators for coming together and making this a uh, focus. Um, There's really two messages, I think. One is, as you've heard, that bipartisanship is important. And even though it is an election year and people are kind of in their, in their camps, uh, it's time to focus on a, on a few issues where there really can be uh, bipartisan support and where there needs to be action. And the fact that two Republicans, two Democrats, are coming together today to focus on the Startup Act 2.0, I think, is extremely important. The second message is that this economy was built by risk-taking entrepreneurs. We're not the leading economy in the world by accident. It was the work of entrepreneurs, not just creating companies, but entire industries. That's been the history of America, the story of America over the last uh, 200 years. It's important that we double down on our entrepreneurs. As you've heard from all these senators, we're not just seeing the globalization of manufacturing that a lot of people are talking about, but also now the globalization of entrepreneurship as capital and talent really flows much more fluidly uh, and, and quickly all around the world. We still have the lead. We are still the world's most entrepreneurial nation. We're gonna lose that position if we don't take action and don't take action now. The Startup Act 2.0 does do that. It builds, as you've heard, on the work of the Jobs Act, which really came together with broad bipartisan support. Leadership from, from the President, his statement of support was critically important. Uh, Majority Leader Eric Cantor brought the House together. The Senate came together. And that was passed and signed into law. And that was very important, and we celebrated that. But even when we were there signed, with the President signing that about six weeks ago, we began the discussion about what do we do next to make sure it's not just focusing on capital, but also focusing on talent and regulation and commercialization, some of the things that are in this bill. So this builds on the Jobs Act and takes it to the next 
an important step of really making sure we do have policies for this country that make sure entrepreneurship can continue to, to, to be the, the, can be the most entrepreneurial economy. And as Senator Warner and several others said, it's particularly important to focus on this global battle of talent. It's crazy that we bring people here, give them these PhDs and master degrees, and kick them out of the country, force them to go back to their countries, essentially start companies there that compete with our companies here. Nobody would think it makes sense if we had people from China coming to our Naval Academy, taught them our naval secrets, and kicked them back, you know, forced them to go back to China to join the Chinese Navy. But that's essentially what we're doing with our immigration policy around uh, engineers and entrepreneurs in particular. As, as Senator Rubio said, immigration is a complicated, sensitive, emotional issue. Uh, and the whole issue of illegal immigration obviously needs attention. The Dream Act obviously needs attention. But right now, I think we should focus particularly on this issue of high-skilled immigration, on entrepreneurs and engineers who are the job creators, who are creating the companies that can power our economy. 